and I just want to give it I just want to give it one more minute to make sure everybody has a chance to hop on and then we'll be getting underway started so Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Katie Zazera. I am the manager of stakeholder engagement here at the MBTA. Um, and I'd like to welcome you to this uh, virtual public meeting for the Dedham East Street Bridge Replacement Project. I'm joined by the project team, including Omar al Shar, who is our project manager. And we're happy to give you a design update on this project. Next slide, please. So I do have to go through a couple of housekeeping things before we get underway. I would like to note that all MBTA activities, including public meetings, are free of discrimination. The MBTA complies with all federal and state civil rights requirements preventing discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, limited English proficiency, and additional protected characteristics. We welcome the diversity from across our entire service area. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit www.mbta.com slash title VI to reach the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights. Next slide, please. I would like to remind everyone of the rules for participating in this meeting, as well as remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. All attendees will be muted during the presentation to prevent excessive background noise. Next slide, please. At the end of the presentation, we will be accepting written and verbal comments. To make a written comment, click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your window. When the Q&A window pops up, type your comments in the comment box. If you're having a technical problem, please share your issue using the Q&A feature at any point during the meeting, and we will respond as quickly as possible. Since questions may be answered during the presentation, we do ask that you hold your questions and comments until the presentation is completed. We wanna make sure everybody has an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment, so we ask that you keep your verbal comments relatively brief. Next slide, please. You can view closed captions by clicking the closed captions feature and selecting from the options shown. Show subtitle will display a caption at the bottom of the screen. View full transcript will display the meeting's audio transcription in a window to the right. We also have ASL interpreters for tonight's meeting. Next slide, please. So here's an agenda of what we're gonna cover this evening. Um, I'm going to begin by passing it over to my colleague Omar, who will speak about the project overview and the existing conditions about the bridge. Um, I will then discuss some safety concerns along with my colleague Brian Mellon from Railroad Operations um, about some recent incidents that have occurred with this bridge and also discuss the progress since our last public meeting in December. Omar will then come and speak about the proposed improvements for the bridge as well as the project timeline. And then we'll discuss next steps and get into the Q&A portion of our meeting. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Omar Alshar. Thank you, Katie. Hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this second public outreach meeting. My name is Omar Alshar, the MBTA project manager for the East Street Bridge Replacement Project. Our project overview. Looking at the graphic at the top right of the screen, the East Street Bridge, which carries the Franklin Line, is located between Endicott and Dedham Corporate Center stations. One of the main goals of this project is to improve safety on and below the bridge by minimizing overheight vehicle collisions, eliminate the bottleneck, and provide sidewalks under the bridge and allow for better traffic flow on East Street. Also, the project will improve reliability by reducing East Street traffic closures due to the bridge collisions, reducing collisions that require town emergency personnel response, and reducing commuter rail service interruptions. 
The current estimated total cost of the bridge is 18 million, which includes design, construction, and MBTA administration. The photo on the lower right side shows the existing condition of the bridge looking west on East Street. Next slide, please. Now we'll talk about the existing condition. So the bridge was built in 1904. It is a 118 year old bridge and reached its service life. The bridge has substandard roadway widths, two 11 foot six wide travel lanes without shoulders and there are no sidewalks under the bridge. The photo on the right side is a view of East Street looking west showing the narrow roadway. Also, the bridge has a 12 foot three substandard vertical clearance, which led to multiple over high truck collisions. The most recent one happened two days ago on September 26, 2022. I'll turn it back to you, Katie. Thank you, Omar. So we wanted to take a minute to speak about safety concerns about this bridge, um, while recognizing, as was made very vocal in the December public meeting and throughout our conversations with the town and elected officials, that there is a very large community concern about the height of this bridge. Um, the reason this project has been prioritized is there are tremendous concerns to safety, not only for our operations of our commuter rail network, but to the traveling public below and to abutters on the right of way. Um, my colleague Brian Mellon is going to speak in a minute about the incident that occurred this past Monday. It was a hit and run that caused very serious damage, including a track alignment. The bridge came off its bearings and there were impacts to girders. Um, I'm sure some of you are aware the road was closed and, and there were very big safety concerns for our railroad. Um, additionally, the bridge was hit two other times this past summer. On August 16th, it was hit by some construction equipment. And on July 29th, it was hit by an overheight tractor trailer. And as we mentioned back in the December public meeting, it was hit eight times between July 2019 and November 2020. Um, the second bullet you may be familiar with, this is the same information we presented back in December, but this just talks about the existing bridge and what is recommended by, um, by agencies that we, we uh, work with. So the existing bridge is 12 feet, three inches. Um, in Massachusetts, the maximum height for a truck is 13 feet, six inches. Federal Highway and Ashto have a recommended minimum of 14 feet. Mass DOT, um, the Department of Transportation, that is is what manages roads, actually requires 16 feet six inches, um, and so this is substandard in their mind. Our 14 foot clearance. Um, the other thing I do want to proactively mention, I know there's been a lot of discussion, and we addressed this in an FAQ we produced, that the bridge on the same road, neighboring Westwood, is not 14 feet. Um, that bridge is posted at 13 feet, three inches, um, and that is posted by the town. The towns who own the roads are responsible for posting what the height of the bridge is, and it's at their discretion. That bridge is not 13 feet, three inches. It is actually above 13 foot six. Um, it is not 14 feet, uh, as we've discussed. The only reason it is not 14 feet is it was physically impossible to reasonably build it that way. And had we been able to, we would have chosen to build it at 14 feet. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Brian, who is the Director of Engineering and Maintenance for Railroad Operations to speak about Monday's incident. Thank you, Katie. Um, as as Katie mentioned, the uh, the incident on occurred on on Monday evening at about 5:30 p.m. Uh, we we had a hit and run on this bridge that uh, was identified uh, by the locomotive engineer operating an outbound train, uh, which occurs in this case on the far side from that center photo. Um, he identified a misalignment on the inbound or adjacent track, uh, and called it into our dispatchers. As you can see in the photo on the bottom left hand side. Uh, it caused about a four inch misalignment in track, uh, which poses a very significant safety hazard. Uh, there's a very real possibility that had that uh, engineer not identified that defect, an inbound train uh, on an express route 
skipping Endicott Station could have been traveling up to 40 miles an hour over this bridge. Uh, and there's a very significant risk of derailment, uh, putting that train either on the ground or on the, on the top of the bridge, putting both the riders and the traveling public below the bridge uh, in significant danger. Uh, you can see here on the photo on the top left-hand side, uh, it shifted out of the pocket and then in the center, we had to actually pull out the, the uh, heavy equipment to re restore the uh, location of the bridge and, and secure the proper track alignment. This causes not only significant delays in and around the town of Dedham on E Street and at Endicott Circle due to all the traffic constraints, but it also caused a five mile an hour speed restriction on the, on the uh, track at the bridge, which caused significant delays to both inbound and outbound trains on the entire Franklin branch. Uh, so it's really imperative that uh, we were able to get this bridge uh, elevated and eliminate the bridge strikes for the safety of both the riding public on MBTA commuter rail, but also for the traveling public who go up, uh, travel below the bridge as well. Um, at that point, I'm going to pass this back to Katie and I uh, continue. Thanks, Brian. So here's what's been going on since the December public meeting. Again, as I referenced, we did develop an FAQ based on the comments that we received at that meeting. And there was also very high attendance at that meeting as there is at this one. Um, and again, very common themes that is available at the webpage, which is www.mbta.com slash East Street Bridge. Don't worry about remembering that it's in a later slide. Um, we've also been meeting regularly with town staff, including the engineering department, DPW, uh, the fire department and police to talk about not only the design of the project, but what traffic impacts there may be and any detours that may be associated with our construction. Um, the town has also proactively met with MassDOT um, as they are responsible for the road to try and look at roadway usage restrictions. Um, and we are, um, very, very happy to partner with them if they design any mitigation to help them install it during the construction of our project. We've also been coordinating with Eversource, which I'm sure you are all aware of, has ongoing construction activity near our, near our bridge, and we've been progressing further on the design. So with that, I'm going to have Omar pop back in to show you what we, what we are looking at for the design of the bridge. Thank you, Katie. Um... So I'll talk about the proposed improvement that this project will provide. So the proposed bridge will have a 14 feet minimum vertical clearance, which will reduce the potential for overheight collisions and allow safe passage uh, for emergency vehicles. Also will require time to post signages. The current desi uh, design shows 12 foot travel lanes and two foot shoulders. The roadway will be five feet wider than the existing roadway, in addition to adding uh, two new sidewalks under the bridge. The proposed sidewalks will allow residents to safely walk under the bridge. And I want to mention here that uh, based on the recent discussions we had with the town and the recent striving plans that the town shared with us, we are currently re-evaluating the proposed uh, roadway striping to see if a bike lanes can be added. There will be uh, roadway reconstruction due to the roadway lowering also uh, will be drainage improvement, which will address the existing flooding con uh, condition under the bridge, including uh, uh, and also the final uh, lowered roadway condition. Also, uh, some utility, utility relocation, uh, relocation will be necessary. Uh, the rendering sketch on the right side shows a concept of the proposed bridge looking east from Grant Avenue. Next slide, please. Okay, for project timeline. So the project is currently in the design phase and the final design submission and approval are anticipated to be in late fall 2022. The construction procurement is anticipated to be in winter 22-23. The notice to proceed for contractors uh, will be uh, in spring 2023 and we anticipate construction activities to start in summer 2023. Uh, the construction completion will be late 2024, early 2025. 
And um, with that, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Katie. Thank you, Omar. So, so here's what's coming up for this project. Uh, as Omar mentioned, this construction will likely begin in the spring. So we will be holding a public meeting ahead of construction to make sure you are all aware of what the schedule looks like, what traffic impacts there are. For those of you who take our Franklin line to have an idea of how that may impact your commuting. So we will be coming back to you next year with that. Um, I want to also make a note that this deck will be on the web page, and so you will be able to download it. I know there are some hyperlinks here, um, but for email advisories, you are able to sign up on the website, which again is www.mbta.com slash East Street Bridge. Um, and also, if you have questions or comments, if you're not able to get a question or comment in tonight, if you think of one in the days coming, please email us at eaststreetbridge at mbta.com. We regularly have the project team monitor that. Next slide, please. Okay, so it's time to get the question and answer period underway. I'm just gonna pull up my notes so I make sure to give you all the right instructions. If you would like to share a written comment, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to submit your typed question or comment. If you would like to make a comment verbally, please please press the raise hand button and we will recognize you when it's your turn to speak. So I will say your name out loud and then uh, Reagan, who's helping me out on the technical side, will click to unmute you so we can hear your comment. Um, for those of you who are joining on the phone, you are able to raise your hand by pressing star nine. Um, in order to hear as many comments as possible, again, we do ask that your comments uh, you keep your comments brief. We'd like to hear from as many people as we can tonight. Um, so with that, on, on the panel to help me field some questions, um, again, I'm Katie Cesera. I'm going to invite back Omar, the project manager, uh, Brian Mellon, our director of engineering and maintenance for railroad operation. And I'm also going to invite Brad Nickel, who some of you may recognize as he gave the presentation in December. He is our deputy chief for bridges and structures. And so with that, um, I'm going to begin to monitor um, the, the Q&A. And I do see um, a couple of written questions that came in. So I'd like to address those first. Um, so Paul Robinson says, while I can understand the safety concerns, that's fine but I and most citizens from Dedham and East Street are concerned about turning East Street into a Route 1 bypass. What are you doing to address that? Um, Brad, I am guessing you are the best person to answer this question. Thank you, Katie, and, and good evening, folks. I wanted to take a quick moment to uh, thank you for the opportunity to come out here and to present our project tonight. Um, the, the best answer for that is we've tried, we've been working collaboratively with the town and we had reached out to MassDOT to see what could be done um, in regards to uh, the, the Carter. It, MBTA does not have purview over the Carter there. So this is really an issue that um, outside of our right away, it's the town's jurisdiction. So we have been working with the town to see if there's any sort of measures that can be done to um, implement some sort of traffic calming associated with that, but that's outside of our purview at the MBTA from a legal and a liability standpoint. Okay, thank you, Brad. Uh, Michael Marks writes, what new freight traffic may we expect with the improved bridge infrastructure? Again, Brad, I think this one goes to you. Uh, I can answer it or, you know, Brian is actually somebody that would probably be good because of his um, role in railroad operations. Yeah, Brad, I can step in here. Um, as far as new traffic, um, the, the, the way traffic, the freight traffic runs out there is always subject to change in the future. However, I will say that the, the bridge currently rates for freight traffic uh, and the new bridge will have uh, another compliant rating. So the, the improvement in the bridge infrastructure will not modify the, the volume of freight traffic, um, it's, it's not controlled by the load rating of this bridge in this case. 
Okay, thank you, Brian. Um, I see Danielle DeLuca's hand is raised. Reagan, if you could unmute her so she can offer her comment. Danielle, you should now be able to speak. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak in the presentation. Um, I was very encouraged to hear that you are speaking um, with the town about the possibility of um, changing the striping to include bike lanes. Um, I'm someone who frequently bikes um, on along that route, and um, you know the current conditions are very dangerous with with no shoulder um, and no bike lanes. Um, and the town uh, right now is in the process of striping East Street, and are planning on on putting bike lanes on the rest of East Street. Um, so if they're not included here, it would be you know one narrow stretch where the bike lane disappears. Um, so I would just like to voice my support for that. Um, and also the, um, the width of the travel lanes, um, you know, if we're talking about um, traffic calming measures, um, increasing the width of the travel lane is going to increase speeds um, and that'll be an, an uh, adverse um, result for, for traffic calming. So I think having a narrower travel lane, you know, even leaving them at 11 foot um, width would be helpful um, and allow space for a bike lane, potentially even allow space for a wider sidewalk. In the, um, in the drawing there, it looked like, you know, although those may be ADA compliant in the minimum sense, um, it's not going to leave enough room for like a double stroller, for example, which I think a lot of families are using um, to, to get under there, under that bridge or would use. So um, just keeping that in mind, I think a, a reduced travel width a travel lane width is actually preferable in this location. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comment. Um, and, and as a note, uh, there are members of town staff from Dedham on this call, so they're able to hear your comments as well, which we appreciate. Um, Brad or Omar, I don't know if you want to comment at all about the, the sidewalk or, or road design. I can take that one, Katie. Um, yeah, we are looking at um, if we add potentially bike lanes, um, that would reduce the, reduce the lane width. And um, I think that we have, our sidewalks are a little bigger than five foot, but what we're trying to do is, you know, fit the geometry of what we have in the roadway and not move our abutments back any further, which would increase our span, which is kind of what, where we're at with that right now. But we are evaluating it. We have had that comment come in from the town. And I think there's something that can be done there on both fronts from reducing the lane and adding some sort of bike lane, potentially with the striping. Okay, thank you. Um, another written comment, this one comes from, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing things wrong, Hector Lucero. During reconstruction of the bridge, how will traffic on East Street be affected? Um, so Brad and Omar, I think with the construction phasing, you two can speak to this. I'll start with that, Katie. Um, sure. So this uh, will really depend on the what phase of construction we are. Um, during the regular weekday construction, uh, we're gonna do a single uh, lane closure, uh, and we'll be alternating during uh, different stages of construction. Uh, we have uh, multiple weekend uh, closures, and uh, during uh, those weekends, a uh, full roadway closure. Uh, uh, on some of those weekends will be necessary and uh, a detour for the traffic will be through uh, Cedar Street and Anderson Avenue. Okay, thank you, Omar. Um, I see another person with their hand raised. Reagan, if you could unmute, unmute excuse me, Kristen Relia. Kristen, you should now be able to speak. Hey there. Um, I appreciate the acknowledgement tonight that you guys have given of the concerns for the town this evening. Um, and I also do want to note that I do support the safety measures that you're discussing, just as the sidewalks, the bike lanes. Um, obviously, the main concern that many residents have here are around opening up the access to large vehicles on a corridor that didn't previously support it. So great to hear that, you know, MassDOT is getting involved. We're talking with the town. I think I would love to know, can we get some commitment that the MBTA, MassDOT, and the town can work together to implement traffic calming measures and coordinate this timing as part of the construction plan. And I think my fear is that some of these drag on agencies don't talk to each other. 
you know, construction is happening and we don't actually get these things um, worked out the way that we plan. So I mean specifically um, passing the truck ban that the town has already approved through MassDOT and doing that before construction starts. And then, you know, continuing this discussion with engineering around some sort of physical barrier, such as we see on Storo Drive, um, like of the chains hanging something to warn to enforce this ban. So, so I will turn it over to Brad. What, what I can confidently say is this project team is very committed to, has been and will continue to meet very regularly with the town because we do want to be as supportive as we can. Um, but to also reiterate again, the roadway is, is not in the MBTA's purview, right? The, the, the structure itself, the bridge is the MBTA's, the roadway is the town's. And that being said, we want to be as helpful as we can be while recognizing that it's not our road. Um, Brad, I, I, I'm sure you can speak more in depth to this than I can. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm aware that the town and through our discussions with, we have reached out to MassDOT to see what can be done. Um, and basically the, I, I believe a, a truck exclusion has been requested and it's in process and from, I don't have a purview over that, but I don't see why that wouldn't um, move forward. Um, what we, we cannot attach anything to our bridge from a lot, lot legal and liability standpoint. Um, like if you, I heard the example of Starrow Drive. Well, the owners of those assets probably have purview over the roadway below and have chosen that's the way to go because of they can't raise their infrastructure. We, we can't take the liability of having something attached to our structure. Outside of our right of way, the town is free to do whatever they want. And we, MBTA would be committed to if um, something was engineered, developed and done in a timely manner, and there was essentially an agreement, we would be open to trying to construct whatever that common measure was outside of our right away within our contract. To basically what I wanna say is we would be open to allowing the, our contractor to install that underneath our contract for convenience. When the roadway, just say it simply, when the roadway's ripped up and you folks are impacted, if you guys are gonna put something in, it makes the most sense to do it at that time. Yes, so so again, we're happy to help with installation just with the understanding that it's not gonna be an MBT asset going forward because that presents a liability issue. Um, Thank you, Brad. I have I have quite a few written comments coming in, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot to those for a minute. And again, if you'd like to offer a verbal comment, please feel free to raise your hand. Um, Michael Marks asks, "What were the heights of the trucks that have impacted the old bridge, which the current bridge?" Um, I will let Brad and Brian speak to this, but um, I will say that Monday's was a hit and run, uh, so we do not know what vehicle hit it. Um, and again, I believe my understanding is the July impact was from an overhype bridge, but Brad and Brian, I'm guessing you know more than I do on this. So um, I, I, I don't have data on this at my fingertips to speak to it. Um, I, I mean, the bridge is at 12 foot three. So the heights of the, I mean, so a truck that's under the, the state legal minimum 13 foot six between that, anything over 12 foot three would impact our bridge. So trucks driving in the corridor would impact our bridge. Okay. Um, Shelly McKee, oh, Shelly McKee says, um, what other bridges have been built besides the Westwood example previously mentioned that were 13 foot six? There must be some other instances and precedent for the request to keep this bridge height at 13 foot six. So before I turn this over to Brad, I do want to reiterate the Westwood Bridge is above 13 foot six. It is not 14 feet. I admittedly do not know where it falls. My, I believe it's at 13 foot nine. Brad can correct me. But to be very clear, the bridge was built above 13 foot six. Um, Brad, go ahead. Thank you, Katie. Um, I'm not aware of what we bridges that we've built since we've been at the T that are over roadways that are less than 13 foot six, the state basically minimum. Um, really anything when it, anything over, 
13.6, trucks are going to be able to basically just barely free flow. So that's why the federal, federal in AASHTO, which is the transportation standard of care, recommends at least a minimum of 14 feet. So we have six inches of freeboard on that. And that allows basically, because we don't have purview of the roadway below, if the town was to come back and do a mill and overlay or change this asset, which has a 75 year life sometime in the future, we wouldn't be at risk of bridge strikes. And that's why we've set that. In other instances, um, we, we physically couldn't get to that point, but I don't know of any that have been, been built at the MBTA that are less than 13 foot six in our substandard. Okay. Um, and just a, a comment about the background noise. Um, we're no longer hearing any feedback. So a couple of people chimed in if they were if they were on mute. I don't hear any feedback, so you should be good. Um, Sean Dolan asks, although traffic calming measures may be up to the town or DOT, in your experience with similar scenarios and concerns, what measures have you seen to be acceptable and successful? Um, Again, I don't know that this is something that the MBTA can answer because we're not responsible for roadways, but Brad or, or any of my other panelists, do you have anything to, to offer on this? I, I can speak to this a little bit. Um, I'm not a, a highway or roadway engineer by trade. Um, from my professional experience, uh, one of the things that gets to be concerning from a liability standpoint is putting some sort of structure out there, what happens when vehicles get stuck underneath it? Who's responsible? The town would probably be responsible for, you know, responding to that and dealing with that scenario. Um, it, depending on what you do with these structures, uh, whether it would be some sort of hard structure or, you know, something like speed humps, it affects uh, emergency response times, which is a major liability issue. So, these are things that would have to be considered from the town and from if they were going to want to implement something from an engineering standpoint um, that may be practical, but it has to be vetted. And that, that's generally how I can speak to that. Okay. Uh, Kathleen McDermott at, uh, asks, does the town or MassDOT plan to install flashlights prior to trucks approaching the bridge as well as the flashing lights being installed on the bridge. Um, so again, I would I would redirect your question to um, to the town because that's not something we could answer. Um, but to reiterate a comment that Brad made previously, um, we we don't want to install infrastructure attached to that bridge. Uh, it becomes a liability issue. Brad, you could probably speak a little more eloquently than me on this. What, what, I, what I can say, even at 14 foot, which we are a low clearance bridge. So the bridge will have probably a low clearance sign. It will, um, the town will be allowed to post the bridge for the height restriction or the height of the bridge. Um, we certainly could do something practical. Um, we're more than willing to paint, um, like you saw in the pictures earlier, yellow, um, to alert to trucks uh, on the low court of the bridge, on the bottom flange there. Um, I don't think we're not going to be installing any sort of flashing lights or any sort of apparatus onto the bridge. But I guess that's what I can say about that at this point. Okay. Um, I, I invite people, that, that's all I see in the queue in terms of written questions and raised hands. So I wanna make sure we give, we give time if anybody else wants to make a comment. In the meantime, Amanda, if you could advance to the next slide, um, just, to, uh, just to leave this up again, um, if you do want to continue to follow or, or have more questions, comments, concerns, please email the project team at eStreetBridge at mbta.com. And again, the project page is mbta.com slash eStreetBridge. And on that page, in addition to information and images, you can also sign up for those email updates. Katie, um, there's one more question. I don't know if you saw. I, I No, yes, I see. Okay, right. I just, they just read. Thank you, thank you, Reagan. Um, uh, Selectman McDonald, please uh, let's unmute him and 
and allow him to make a comment. Good evening. Thanks. Uh, thanks for taking uh, the, the time to to do this presentation uh, to the town. Uh, the, the you know I've heard many questions asked about what the town is going to do, how we're going to be approaching. Um, we just received a briefing about this uh, the other day. Uh, uh, Joe Flanagan, uh, Jason Mamone uh, are in the process of, of evaluating, uh, as well as uh, Leon Goodwin, having conversations with the uh, with town council. As you heard uh, earlier from the T, uh, you know, the issues of, of, of liability that, that they don't assume. Um, so we are working through all of this. And I will tell you that um, once we have, you know, a plan in, 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 in the path forward, uh, we will have a, a, an agenda item on, on the select board. Um, I can't promise you that it would be uh, the next one. I want to make sure we get all the information correct. But I know we have some contacts uh, from East Street that we have been uh, reaching out to, you know, over the course of, of the last uh, year or so on this project. And, and once we have a, a date, uh, and, and discussion points, uh, we will we will let everyone know. You know, I understand. You know, the the T regards the uh, you know the fourteen foot bridge. Uh, we did adamantly oppose uh, the increase of the bridge, uh, and unfortunately, uh, due to the reasons that you just heard tonight, uh, there was no uh, desire amongst uh, those that uh, are putting the project together. Uh, to uh, to ratchet down the height, so we will continue to work uh, with the T, you know, during the construction process, uh, as well as Mass Start concerning the uh, truck ban uh, that we have filed for. for and uh, once that gets approved, we will let anybody know. But um, there are, all, I believe, all five members of the select board are on, uh, and uh, we'll we'll take notes and uh, we'll let everybody know. And uh, you know, thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your comments, and I will add, um, Jason Mamoni is on the call. Uh, I think I think he always lights up when I call him to speak about things. And so again, to thank our partners with the town, who have been collaborating with us, um, and to uh, to assure um, other people on this call, um, your your selectmen have been very strong advocates for you. And I would just add um, one one additional comment. It's it's not a question of us desiring to have it at 14 feet. If it were not a safety concern, we are very aware and want to be very respectful of the very legitimate concerns this community has about truck traffic on your road. And we are very understanding of that. Um, as demonstrated by Monday's incident, it is a very strong safety issue and safety comes first at the MBTA. So just to, to reiterate that, and again, um, thank our partners at Dedham because it helps us deliver a better project and we very much so appreciate that. Um, I do have another written comment from Michael Marks. Do you know about what time the September 26th hit and run occurred? Brian, I'm guessing you would know that best. Yeah, I don't have an exact time, but I do know uh, based on the way it was paged out uh, to us that the, uh, the that southbound or outbound train uh, reported it into the dispatcher at 5.08 p.m. So sometime in the vicinity shortly before 5.08 p.m. on Monday evening. And, and I think I would add, if, if anybody who is on this call happened to see or has more information, that would be of value to the T to know. So please, please share because again, it was a hit and run. So we don't know what vehicle hit or when, and that would be very helpful for us. Um, Oh, Michael says I may have video of that truck on East Street. If you could share that with us, that would be wonderful. Brian, do you have something to add? No, that would be incredibly helpful for us, yes. Okay, do you know which, I don't think we know which way it was traveling. Do we know which side we, of the bridge it hit? Oh, we do. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I believe based on the way it was shifted, right? It had to have been traveling uh, you know, having just gone around Endicott Circle towards the tracks, um, so so, uh, I guess I'm we'll call that west, right? Westbound on East Street. So okay. it hit. Uh, yeah. Can we pull up the slide that shows um, the bridge itself with the 
basically Endicott Circle being in the background at the existing condition. So the the uh, machinery there is like a, uh, what about the existing photo of the bridge itself uh, that's earlier in the presentation? Perfect. So I believe it would hit would have hit um, the the abutment on the right hand side as shown here. So it was traveling away from Endicott Circle, if I understand correctly. Okay. Um, again, I, I don't see any further comments. I want to give it a minute. I want to make sure everybody's um, everybody's able. Michael says perfect. Um, so Michael, if you are able to help us with that, that would be really wonderful and we appreciate that. Um, if there are any other questions or comments, again, we'll, we'll give it a minute. Um, Amanda, if we could go back to either the next, you know what, the next step slide should be sufficient um, to, again, uh, we will be coming back early next year once we have a, contra a construction contractor on board and we know the construction schedule. We wanna make sure we're sharing with you again what the road impacts are, what the impacts to the Franklin line are, um, what, whatever noise you may need to expect. Again, especially for those of you who live fairly close to the bridge, we wanna make sure you're prepared ahead of time. Um, and again, please visit the website. And if you think of a comment tomorrow, um, or in the coming days, we do regularly monitor this inbox. Um, so we, uh, we, we look forward again to continuing to, to work with um, and, and, and partner with you as we, as we deliver this very important bridge replacement. Um, I'll, give it, I'll give it one more minute. Again, if you'd like to raise your hand um, or type a comment, if that's your preference, either or is fine. Okay, uh, Michael Morris says, am I correct in hearing that any traffic mitigation on East Street is solely the responsibility of the town, that the T will not change its plans to build a 14 foot bridge? Um, I believe the short answer is yes, but I will let Brad further answer this. Yes, we have purview on the right of way above in are charged with public safety with the traveling rail pop, rail rail on the tracks and below. And the standard of care is 14 feet minimum that we need to, with the federal minimum that we need to go to. So that's what and, we're going to. And then and the traffic mitigation is the responsibility, the corridor is the responsibility of the town. And however, the MBTA, has been and it will continue to, you know, work with the town and MassDOT to see if there's something that can be done when this interruption is happening. Yeah. But it's not the MBTA's responsibility. Yes, and and again, um, to reiterate Brad's point um, and the selectman's point, the town is very actively looking into this um, and seeing what what they may want to do. And again, we are happy to partner with them and assist with the installation of whatever mitigation they come up with. Um, uh, Katie Lombardi says, can you clarify that again about the safety of the corridor below also being on the MBTA? So, so again, to clarify, um, the bridge itself and the rail, what we call the right of way, um, if you're not familiar with that term, that is, that is the MBTA's property and responsibility. The roadway below, including the sidewalk, is not the MBTA's. That is the responsibility of the town. Um, with that being said, we want to be as good of a partner as we can, which is why we chose to widen the roadway, why we chose to install um, sidewalks, because we know that's something that the community has been wanting for a long time. We're aware of how dangerous that is for pedestrians at that point. But in terms of any traffic calming measures, whatever that may be, that's, that's not in the MBTA's purview. That's not in our jurisdiction. And so as we've been discussing, um, the town has been working on um, and will continue to, uh, and, and I don't mean to speak for the town if I'm speaking out of turn, um, uh, Jason or Joe, please raise your hand because I don't want to say anything incorrectly, um, but they're continuing to, to work through um, what would be appropriate and they're keeping us in the loop so that when the time comes, as Brad mentioned, when the bridge is under construction, if we can be helpful with installing what it is they design, we're happy to do that. But again, 
regardless of what gets installed, regardless of what's um, chosen, that's not actually the MBTAs, that's the towns because the town owns the road. So I hope, uh, Katie, I hope, I hope that was helpful. It, I, just to clarify as well, what, what I meant was it, we're responsible for the, you know, we, we have a bridge that puts heavy rail over the roadway and that's what we're responsible for. We want to make sure that the bridge is safe, that the, you know, that the photo that Brian showed that we spoke to earlier, a four, a four inch rail bend, God forbid there was a derailment. We show this picture on the, on the lower left. If going over that at speed, last thing we wanted to do is have a derailment, have the train come off the tracks and fall um, in somebody's backyard or on the road below with passengers on it. And that's what I was speaking to, safety below. Yeah, which, um, which again, I think, I think everyone in this meeting um, respects how, again, we're, we're all very aware of the safety impacts, right? And we want to be respectful both of our passengers and of, of the people of Dedham and anybody who uses East Street. Um, again, I'm going to do another call uh, for comments. Um, I see uh, Tracy Driscoll has her hand raised. So Reagan, if you could unmute her, please. Tracy, you should be all set. Oh, I think it still shows her as muted for me, Reagan. Okay, can you hear me now? I can. Okay, thank you. Um, so when you mentioned that the, the T is only responsible for the bridge and you're not doing anything with the roadway, are you lowering the roadway or are you raising the bridge? Brad, I think. I can take that. that. Yes, we are lowering the roadway to increase the bridge height, but ultimately the corridor and the control and that roadway is under the purview of the town. We're also putting in the sidewalks uh, that, that technically what you're looking at right now, we could put the bridge back right like this. So we decided the right thing to do for the town to increase safety was to put in the sidewalks. We're looking at the things with the bike lanes. Also with the lowering the roadway, we're improving the drainage. The, this currently floods and ponds. So we are doing improvements to the roadway that the town is allowing us to do, I guess is how I would say it as part of this project. So, so the, the um, it could we leave the roadway if the T really doesn't want to be responsible for the roadway? Can we leave the roadway as it is and widen the bridge? So, so again, the concern with the height really has to do with what we experienced on Monday. We can't we can't risk the bridge being hit like this. So we we can't maintain a substandard clearance that it could get hit by a truck. Um, and again, Brian, I'll I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you comment on that as well. Yeah, it's, it's necessary for the safety of the railroad to have adequate clearances and eliminate as many bridge strikes as possible. I, I, I will add that this is one of the most frequently struck bridges on our commuter rail infrastructure. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, I, it, it looks like, um, it looks like Tracy has a, a follow up. So if, if we could unmute him again, please. I thanks. No, so I, I, but just to be clear, then when you say that the, the T is not um, involved with the roadway, I think it's how you put it before or not, <clears throat> doesn't have any purview over the roadway. You are actually ro lowering the roadway as part of the bridge reconstruction. So you are involved with the design of the roadway and the reconstruction of the roadway because you have to in order to build the bridge the way you would like to. Is that accurate? That is correct. Right. That is correct. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Tracy. All right. Um, I also see, forgive me, I'm going to pronounce your last name wrong. Michael Denjaleski. I hope I did well there. Um, if we could unmute him, Reagan, please. Michael, you should be able to speak now. You may have to unmute yourself, Michael. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, just a quick question. 
in the end result of this bridge, is it going to look like the bridge over in Islington? So why don't we pull up? Why don't we pull up the um, Amanda? If we could go to the proposed improvement slide to show the the view of the bridge, and then Brad or Omar, if you'd like to speak to that. I can speak a little bit to this. This is just, this is a conceptual rendering. Um, the colors might not be completely right, but this is what it would look like. And some of the comments that we had that we're looking at is we're looking at you know a different striping pattern to probably hopefully allow for smaller lanes and, and bike lanes. Um, but this is generically what the bridge would look like from a you know it from a from a elevation view looking at it. And a okay. form liner, I want to add, excuse me, a form liner will be used for the apartments. So again, this is just a rendering and does not really show the exact final look in. So it will be looking uh, better than what's shown right now on the rendering. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, okay. Kathleen McDermott has a question. The photo you showed that the truck, the photo you showed the truck was obviously beyond the height. It was obviously over height. Does MassDOT or the town find these drivers? I don't know that that's a question we would have the answer to. Um, does, I was gonna say, do, do any of the three of you know that answer? I, I personally do not have the answer to that question. I, I don't know. Okay. No, I, I don't either, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Kathleen, I would suggest reaching out um, to the town to see if, if they find, um, I, I'm unfamiliar with if MassDOT does. Okay, another, another call for any uh, questions or comments that people have. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, well with that, if we could go back to that last slide, please, Amanda, again, just to flash it on the screen one more time. Um, I really appreciate everyone's time this evening. Again, a special thanks to, I believe the entire select board was here this evening. I saw Senator Rush and Rob McMurtry, we appreciate you attending. And again, um, Jason Mamone and Joe Flanagan from the town, and, and I believe Leon Goodwin is on as well. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to hear what we had to share. Um, if you were not able to submit your comment tonight, please again, email us at eaststreetbridge at mbta.com. And again, the project webpage um, where you can also sign up for email updates is mbta.com slash eaststreetbridge. So with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs>